Hello and welcome everybody. Today's topic is Basics of SQL and I am your instructor Divya Thakur. So today's agenda is to learn about the SQL statement select and about these clauses which are from distinct and limit. What are clauses? We'll just see in a moment's time. So SQL statement is any text that the database engine recognize as a valid command. SQL statements also include a semicolon as the statement terminator or at the end of the statement. It's not required on every platform, but it's a very handy practice and it's a standard part of the SQL grammar. Now queries are the logical statements. So the, and they are the logical lines in which these SQL statements arrange themselves and thus help the database engine to retrieve data based on a specific criteria. So let's discuss in detail. So commands like select, from, where, distinct are standalone statements. But when we arrange them like this on a database table, so for example, select distinct and these are the column names, invoice ID, unit price, from invoice items, this is the table name, where unit price, which is a column, equals equals 1.99, then this becomes a query. And the query makes a logical use of these statements and retrieves this data for us. Now, what are SQL clauses? Clauses are inbuilt functions available to us in SQL. With the help of clauses, we can deal with the data easily stored in the table. So clauses, what they do help us filter and analyze the data quickly. For example, distinct over here is a clause, which means that retrieve un unique records, that is unique rows, distinct rows. From means like you have to select one column and then you will place that clause from this table. So from, from means you have to list tables after that. Limit means return only a specific number of rows. So we'll see about this in just a short moment. So let us see how to use select statement. Before that, let me take you to an example over here. Suppose this is your database in this Excel sheet. So we have T number of rows as T number of columns, as you can see, which means there are 20 columns. And how many rows are there? Let me take you down. This is 3,76,093 rows. 3,76,093 rows. Okay. And if I performed any function on any one of these columns, suppose this column over here, if I would say sort A to Z, this will take a lot of time. See, it's not done yet. It's taking, I said sort A to Z, it's still not happening. Because there are so many rows. And also our source data, this data will also get changed in one go. So that is why we do not use an interface like this. And instead, our SQL queries to extract data from our database. So follow the same steps that I told you yesterday. Just go to your file and then go to open folder and then select your folder in which you have kept your database and this will get loaded. So we'll write a first query today. So let me take you to this select statement over here. The select statement is used to select data from a database. So the data returned is stored in a result table, also called as the result set. So the table itself or the database itself is not coagulated, it's not changed. Instead, we get results in a separate format. So the syntax for this is select column one, column two, etc. with commas placed in between. And this from clause over here lists the table name. So here column one, column two are the field names of the table you want to select the data from. So if you want to select all the fields, that is all the columns in the table, then this is the syntax, which is select 
this asterisk which is a special character from the table name so now let's see always and always once you have opened your folder always go always uh, use control shift and p and this will show you this statement that is open database click on that click on this and then click on this SQLite Explorer and you can see your database you can visualize your database from over here so I'll use uh, this invoice items table and write a query or you can simply do what you can just uh, right click from over here and select this new query so by default it is selecting all these column names from this table which is invoice items I told you how to run this query just right click and select run query and this is the result however if I just want invoice I just want this unit price over here unit price so I'll type in unit price and the intelligence is completing it for me so I'll just press our tab and right click run query or you can do Control shift Q and you can see the result over here only one column has been returned okay and also you can return some more columns for example okay i want unit price and track id and you do not have to list the columns in the way they are being shown that is if track id is before unit price but you're selecting it after unit price that's not a problem so i'm just pressing tab and doing run query and this is the result set that we are getting so feel proud of yourself you have written your first query now let's learn about select distinct statement the select distinct statement is used to return only distinct or different values so inside a table a column often contain many duplicate values okay so for example there in unit price you saw that there was 0.99 listed all over so there were many duplicate values however sometimes you want to list only different or distinct values so for that the syntax is select distinct and then the column name so this distinct will apply only on this column and more columns from table name now if you want to know how many not just want to see if there are distinct values but also if you want to evaluate how many such distinct values exist so for that this count statement is used the count sql statement lists the number of different that is distinct column names so how to use it you just have to do select count and in parenthesis list this distinct column one from table name so garner yourself for the second query so let's apply on this so if i would say select a distinct unit price and track id and i'll do Control shift q to run my query or you can do run query from over here so as you can see unit price and track ids are being returned so this is applying distinct on track id however if i remove this track id and said that just apply distinct unit prices then let's see what it's returning just 0 0.99 and 1.99 are the two distinct values of unit prices available now as you have seen that there were far more track ids so these are the unique track ids and if you want to know how many in number these unique values exist so just write count and place this distinct track id in parenthesis 
and then run your query. So you'll get the number that there are 1984 distinct track IDs available. And similarly, if you want to know how many different rows exist in this database, just to count on this star. So what this star is doing, this asterisk, it's returning you the whole table, right? It's returning you every row. And if you did a count on this, it will return you the number of rows. So if I'll do a run query, it's giving me 2,240 such rows exist. And remember, what were the distinct track IDs? So I'll just do a tab and Control Shift Q. 1984. Now let's learn about limit clause. We have already seen the select which chooses columns and the from which chooses tables statements. Now this limit clause or limit statement is useful when you want to see just a few first rows of a table. So there can be times when you just want to scroll through the uh, database and not through the records. So this can be much faster way for loading than if we load the entire data set because sometimes there can be like three lakh rows. So the limit command is always the very last part of a query. For example, if you are saying select all rows and all columns from tracks and limit 10, this means that show only the first 10 rows and this asterisk means show all columns from the tracks table. So let's try this out. So let me select something else. So I'll select this tracks table over here. And what I'll do, I'll first do select star and the next line I'll write from and tracks with a semicolon and I'll do a shift control and Q and it's giving me all my rows and all my columns okay if I just want to view this table the like 15 rows of it I'll say limit this to 15 and I'll remove the semicolon here and place it here as the statement terminator or as the query terminator. And then I'll just do a right click and run query. And as you can see, only 15 rows were retrieved, not the whole data. So this is how limit works. You can also give some other values to it like 5. So let's again run this and as you can see only five rows are being returned to us. So this is all. Hope you understood it and hope you will practice it on your own. This is all. Thank you for watching.